The Joel Fernandez Show is a talk show channeled spontaneously from source to edify and help raise the vibrations of truthers, starseeds, Christic alchemists, and others who have seen through this illusionary matrix into messianic consciousness by discussing hidden knowledge, higher dimensions, and manifesting so that we can shine our light for everyone to see and co-create the earth that we know we actually deserve to live in. Don't! I gotta go! I'm working on the show! Welcome everybody to the Joel Fernandez Show! I'm Joel Fernandez. And today, I uh, think I'm actually going to be catching up on these videos and the upload schedule. Honestly, like, since Zerhain and even before that, I was pretty busy with these other projects I really wanted to take seriously. And let me tell you, a lot has come out of them. Like, I can't even begin to cover what has really come out of it. But I'm going to try and scratch the surface because today... And especially like the last little week leading up to it. I'm recording this actually the day before Sadanag, March 19th. And honestly, like the last week, it's been a really intense, I guess you could say a hurdle. But it's really a stretch where, you know, we're at the last lap of this race. And it's so amazing when you know the nuances of how physical reality comes into being. From the thoughts and intentions and the actions and everything that we do as manifestors created in the image of Elohim to which you know we are given that authority to actually create our experience of reality and not just our experience because you know our experience is just us experiencing but us experiencing other things so by extension we actually influence the world around us and this is the power and it's just come to such a light in the last week, as I said, that, you know, people aren't standing down. I'm talking about truthers, right? We're talking about those real light beings, the real workers of expansion of not just consciousness, but awareness into materialism. I'm not being materialistic. Don't get me wrong. What I'm talking about is how to use the ego and our experience in physicality to actually influence a better experience of physicality. Like, there's so much that has unfolded in these last two weeks. It's like, I'm going to be putting footage of <laughs> the last couple of rallies here because, you know, honestly, you know, we've had rallies for the last two years every weekend. You know, of course, uh, since the first lockdown in March 2020, you know, people weren't having it, you know, and I'm talking about people in my circles and stuff. We've known the corruption. We've known this kind of stuff since, you know, it happened. And even me, I made a video about it when it first hit and I had to, you know, just kind of taper my words a bit by saying, you know, we got to be sympathetic to the victims, but that was early on in this whole thing and I realized like even that narrative had holes in it but you know what we got to do our own research right we got to do our own research make up our own minds and based on the level of consciousness that we're at we're going to see things you know either the truth for what it is or we're going to believe the lie to be the truth and of course there's levels of that I'm still growing and I don't think in this physical reality I'll ever attain that pure awareness as an ego you know there are moments where I have been in this absolute bliss and absolute shalom shanti peace harmony with all things right in the nature of physicality you are like uh, you know a grain of sand on a somatic board and when you realize your place you realize you know what not only you're supposed to do but what is needed for you to do it when you come at physicality with that kind of expectation you really influence things beyond physical control it's one thing to be shouting in the streets right and a lot of it is an echo chamber because people you're talking to about all these subjects 
they get it. They know, right? But it's the people that don't know that really need to have that click. And it's hard for that to happen. But in the last two weeks, like since Pastor Art's 30th day in solitary confinement, it's almost been like every single force of restraint has come up. And none of this mattered for the last two years, you know, but just this last week, like last week's rally, all of a sudden we meet a police blockade, but the police were holding back, you know, pro-mandate protesters, which is kind of ironic that we're there, that this has already unfolded in such a way where, you know, this is happening this way. But the police were already lined up blocking the street before the anti-protester protests, whatever. Before those people actually got there. And we have footage of that. I'm going to put that right here. Those that be with us are more than those that stand against us. That is the truth. going on here we have like uh, maybe 60 paid losers I mean they're standing up in our rights I guess but they're blocking the street and then we got about uh, 2,000 to 3,000 people clogged up and the police are hold holding them back over there So the Freedom March, you know, it started out great. 
great energy and as soon as we hit this blockade you know it's like what's going on here and they had signs like white supremacy is not welcome here well that's a laugh in and of itself because we are a united people there is no race when it comes to freedom there is no race when it comes to liberty the only race is to get there with all humanity on board but the whole fact is that, you know, it was just escalating energy. And there are some people from the very group that I'm in, and it just became so intense. Like, people were, ga people were cheering. The people in my, the people from the cave, and people from the cave were actually blessing the other side. And when you looked at it, you could see, like, this is a clip from my brother Logan. And honestly, like, this is what they're scared of. They're scared of being outnumbered. And our party ended up after, like, about maybe one or two hours of stalemate. The other side just gave, and we just kept going. We just kept going. The air was, like, literally cleared. And we could see, like, why are they doing this to us, you know? Why are they suddenly making such an issue out of this? And it kind of seemed weird at first. But all of a sudden, I realized it's because... They know they're losing ground. And it's because of the warfare that people have done in the causal realm. The spiritual warfare. Taking down the principalities and the platforms that exist over this city. And specifically this city. I wouldn't be surprised if this city itself is the leading edge that proclaims this uh, way of doing things. Literally entering into that kingdom mindset. Into the way and the words and the hearts of people so that they wake up and they start to do this because this week oh let me tell you from like i think it was like 10 30 or 11 we were at the cave before the rally and all of a sudden everybody's talking and it's like at the park where we're all meeting before the march there was police presence for a two block perimeter around that area and eventually they said like you can gather there because they really couldn't stop that at least <laughs> well they're trying to and they're trying to do that with tickets but they said no bullhorns no marches no nothing but you know what source has a bigger plan and although we still were victorious today we got to realize that this has escalated now into a realm where the people that were busy shouting in the streets and, you know, gathering together and making flags and posters and banners and all this kind of stuff for the bystanders to see has now escalated to a new dimension. And we are taking the control, the people that haven't already, I should say, because I've been doing this as well for the last two years. The people that haven't taken control are going to realize that, hey, shouting in the street is doing something, but we have to change our tactics. And this is literally graduating to the next level because a lot of the people from the rallies would end up going to the remand center where Pastor Art is incarcerated right now. And now that they can't do that and they can't funnel their energy into the marches, a lot of those people are just going to start showing up and they already have been. And the police know it. The police know it, which is why they've set up this whole kind of barrier around the remand center. The last video I posted of that, which is ironically just a couple days ago because of the editing spike I've gotten to and really getting back on track on making these videos. The very fact that they've closed off even that very sliver of parking lot and restricted us to, you know, walking a whole kilometer to get there means that they know something's going down and something is definitely going down because today, today is the 40th day and Pastor Art is really changing that prison from the inside out and we got to realize that even though we're manifesting his release, we're manifesting freedom for him and we're manifesting this breakthrough, the timeline has to unfold in such a way that everything that needs to happen for this phase of the manifestation to unfold has to happen and then the next phase will come in and people's lives are being changed in the prison just one day he called during the service at the cave and five inmates told their story and said 
We're behind you 100%. When we're out, we're gonna be members at the cave. We're changing this world from the inside out and they know it, they're running scared. Because like I said, why do this after two years? Two years, you know? We had the vernal equinox last year. The lockdown was literally declared in the vernal equinox 2020, pretty much. All these times and seasons are set and of course the elite know it, but we know it too and we've been preparing and I've been preparing for this literally since Zerhain for Sadana, if you guys know what I mean. That's the calendar. That's Zerhain is the winter solstice and Saranag is the vernal equinox. And all these things that happen, it's like we really stepped up the game and they know it. You know, they know it. And apparently, you know, protesters or at least freedom loving people, they know that they have water filtration systems. You know, some of them even boil their water because guess what? Their fluoride didn't work. They tried adding fluoride to the water since October and they know it's not working because we're not having any of it. We're not having any of it and they know they're on the losing battle. So when you see this kind of police presence and all this kind of stuff, you know that the time is short and they know their time is short because for the last two years, police have been stopping traffic for the rally to proceed. They have been so helpful and so, you know, and guys they're still nice people they're still nice people but they're paid to do their job and you know that's one of the worst excuses ever but we got to realize that this is the reality they are paid to do a job and there is definitely interests behind the scenes that perpetrate this kind of lockdown awareness you know I'm not just talking about the physical lockdown I'm talking about the mental lockdown emancipate yourselves from mental slavery None but ourselves can free our mind. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. This is what we're talking about, you know. We're not talking about lies that need more lies to defend themselves and then more lies to defend themselves against that. We're talking about the reality of physicality. We're talking about changing the world from the inside out. And how is that done? That is done by changing yourself from the inside out. Do you do the inner work? Do you actually change those paradigms and those assumptions that you have that actually create these loop patterns in your experience of reality? Are you experiencing reality the same old, same old patterns and cycles, jobs, relationships, you know, communities, people that are associating with you? Are you manifesting more and more of that? Or are you able to break out of that and actually achieve something bigger? Because, you know, why wouldn't you want to do that? That is literally our nature, made in the image of Elohim. Elohim spoke the word and created physicality. And we have that same power. Are we using it? Are we speaking logos into our situations? Or are we cutting our own legs out from under us and speaking the reality as it appears? Really, circumstances don't matter. Are you looking at the wind and the waves and judging what you're gonna do and what's gonna happen based on that? Or are you looking to Christ, right? Circumstances don't matter. Only your state of being matters. That is faith. That is the hope, which is the anchor, elpis in Greek. Hope in the scripture doesn't mean what we think of it as in English. In English, we hope as a potential I hope this happens. Please let it happen. But in Greek, elpis actually means an anchor. Where you have an anchor and you're sure and you're firm on it. And even if you're like tossed by the waves, you still have that anchor that holds you. And you can pull that anchor and draw yourself towards that yourself. So on top of all these things, you know, ultimately, you know, faith is above hope. Pistis. And that is when you're convinced beyond the shadow of a doubt. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. That is when you're absolutely convinced in your inner being of that which you've set forth. That is pistis. But above all of that is agape, which is translated love, but it literally means unconditional love or that state of unconditionality. 
Again, circumstances don't matter, only state of being matters. And when that state of being is tapped into, you can literally get into that and everything, everything will conform in the physical world once you are in that space internally. So these are the dying gasps of a system that is completely shattered from the inside out. And, you know, like I said, they didn't do much before, but now they're doing it because things are escalating. We are escalating. And you know what? We are still escalating because acceleration had begun, like I've been saying for the last, what, two years now, two years. I started this channel back in 2019 and mid 2020, like I had a huge epiphany and it's just been epiphany after epiphany because I've been pursuing this awakening, this inner standing of how to manifest. And of course, that was my intention, you know, even back in like 2015 and before, like since 2012, since my great awakening, that's how I see it, 2012. And I just downloaded this huge download and with that download came the calendar but the main download was come out of her my people lest you share of her plagues and her judgment judgment is coming do you want to be judged the same way they have been judged you know that's not our inheritance that's not who we are we are literally beings of light and we are here to manifest light bring to pass this utopia that doesn't break any of the expectations that we have been instilled with every expectation of life and love and happiness and peace and joy and prosperity and abundance and health and wholeness nothing missing nothing lacking nothing broken nothing out of place every expectation that we have is set to fulfill itself and if it doesn't fulfill itself that means that we've cut source short and I don't believe there's any greater insult to the divine source than by saying you know what I know you lined this all up for me but I didn't want it I didn't deserve it I didn't put in the work to actually achieve my destiny but uh, you know what even those of us that are I'm sure will get to the other side and be amazed at how much more we could have done and that's not to beat ourselves up over that's to really know that there are no limits you know right now right here there are no limits in this moment there are no limits yeah sure many of us have been gypped in the past probably all of us right I know I have many 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 times but you know what? That doesn't affect my manifestation level. The last video I talked about all the piano, digital pianos slash keyboards slash real piano work that I've been doing in the last couple months, right? How that's accelerated. On top of that 30 day challenge where I did one composition every day, you know, now I'm halfway through actually playing all those pieces. And it's just like, how? How did this idea even come to me you know because apparently I had it in me all along apparently I could compose music and pretty good music simple I kept the 30-day challenge simple but even that was a challenge because I could have gone way elaborate and made some really astounding music and now I am now I am doing that just not every day you know you take your time with these pieces you work on them efficiently quality over quantity and you know that's mostly what leaves the lasting impression so the same thing is going down with you know all these rallies as well quality over quantity quality over quantity because that's how physical reality is adjusted it's adjusted because we create ripple effects and of course through the quality of those ripples we can influence others and influence reality and all of that this is the winning streak but when we're on the other side of this page guys there's so much 
that can happen, you know. There is so much more that will be done and will be able to do. You know, that's the thing right now. Right now we're kind of stifled. Right now we're kind of like, we got to oppose, we got to fight. But every time it's like something's coming up, but are we able to deal with it? Yeah, we're able to deal with it, but we got to know where our battleground is. But, you know, once we're on the other side of this page, honestly, that's when the real takeoff is set to begin. And I'm documenting this on Project Exodus. It's a Telegram channel. Uh, look it up because I put all the videos of the rallies on there. I put a lot of stuff on there. But... It's documenting this mass exodus, this mass awakening, this coming out of Babylon. That's what it's all about, coming out of Babylon. And Babylon the Great has fallen, has fallen, and has become a laughing stock. We're looking at these politicians, right? <sighs> Here in Canada, let me tell you. And they're just... Do you, if you want to really go insane, which I don't think anybody does, just try and comprehend how bizarre some of the stuff that they're trying to do is. It don't even make sense. And you got to wonder, like, they've been doing this for generations and they know how to manipulate. They know how to totalitarian tiptoe us into totalitarianism. But what went wrong this time? Why are they scrambling? Why are they doing it in such a hodgepodge manner? Really, what's going on? And why are the lies so obvious to see for us? You know, not everybody. Not everybody. Uh, people still go out and fly the blue and yellow, but don't know what's underground in the blue and yellow. Let's just say it that way. You know, but it's funny because as soon as this narrative came out, YouTube took down their unclosable banner with all the headlines of, well, you know, COVID. But we see people still muzzled like sheep. And it's just pride that won't allow them to admit that they've done been bamboozled. But, you know, they might admit that, but they fall for the next narrative, right? So... We got to really know, those of us that are knowers at least, we got to really break out of this paradigm and see the truth for what it is. See the truth for what it is. The truth is an edifice. The truth is absolute. You know, you might have a conviction and people call convictions like, oh, this is my truth. This is your truth. But if truth wasn't absolute, there'd be no reason to get upset if someone disagrees with you. There'd be no reason to squash them or to counter them or to have any kind of discussion or conversation or argument if truth is subjective. Truth is absolute. And we have to distinguish between, you know, personal conviction, which has been lately termed, you know, personal truth. And it is true. It is true because we are manifesting our individual realities from our perspective. Of course it's true, but it does not compare to absolute truth. And absolute truth doesn't need you to believe in it to perpetrate itself. It lives. And that's why they need to squash it. That's why they need to squash it. And what is the one thing they're doing to Pastor Art? They're trying to squash him changing the lives of inmates, which he is doing which he is doing. How do you think the system is crashing when a pastor is, you know, leading people to Christ? Why would they care about that if it's just fiction? Why would they care about it if it's subjective truth? Like, none of this would matter, right? But why is Sufism countered so strongly by mainstream Islam? Why is like Pentecostalism so countered and the word of faith and prophecy and deliverance by mainstream Christianity, right? And I'm talking mainstream by YouTube teachers, 
You know, they'll always say, oh yeah, this guy is messed up because he's talking about this. But oh, in another video, you got to buy this book by so-and-so author because he gives a really good commentary on such and such. Well, you know, so does the other guy you're lambasting. But you never actually quote his stuff. You just quote other things that, you know, people say about them or, you know, anyway, anyway, <laughs> that's another rabbit hole. I don't need to get down. But literally, things are not the way they seem. Things are not the way they seem. You know, you can pray for the blue and yellow. You know, pray for every nation. Pray for the red, white, and blue. You know, all of the countries that are red, white, and blue. But, you know, pray for Tartaria too. <laughs> Don't forget that well, if you know this channel, and Jeff Genny will also be making an appearance very soon. He's back in town, and uh, things are really looking forward with that. So, you know, pray for pray for the whole world, you know. And, and praying is really manifesting. That's the prayer of faith. When you know that it's accomplished, you know the end result is peace and wholeness. Shalom, shanti, whatever language you're saying that in you can actually see that that is the manifestation. And you want that for everybody, right? How many of us actually want war? I know there are people out there that do. Because if they don't get the war, their plan fails. But how many of us actually want war? How many of us actually want this? And I'm talking about the people in the nations that are actually instigating war. How many of those people actually want war? You know, it's not the people. It's even not the leaders because sometimes they're just puppets on a string or they've got hooks in their jaw to use scriptural language and they're just being pulled to do something. But are they the right hand of Yahweh dealing out justice, harvest, karma, Again, whatever word you want to call it, what they put out is what they're going to get back. And, you know, even in Psalm 137, it says, talking about the Babylonians who exiled the Yehudim out of, you know, the kingdom of Yehuda. It says to them, blessed is he that repays you as you have done to us. Blessed is he that dashes your children upon the rocks. Now, how can scripture actually say something like that? It's because the principle that's being addressed is seed and harvest. You know, the Babylonians sowed that kind of seed by doing that kind of stuff to the Yehudim. But why would the person that does that to the Babylonians not have repercussions? It's because of the system of Yahweh. It's because of the system of Yahweh. And it even says in the Quran, when somebody does wrong to you and you want to retribute justice to them, you know, talking about courts more specifically, you know, not individuals getting even, it says retribute the justice with an equal measure or a lesser measure, but do not exceed what they have done to you. And it says, indeed, don't even consider that because it's better for you to leave justice to Allah talking about the Quran. Allah is just the Arabic term that's translated God. And I pointed this out in a previous Joel Fernandez show. So here we're looking at, of course, the Judeo-Christian paradigm of God, the God that is in the Bible. And this same God is translated from the Hebrew term Elohim, right, which is the proper term. It's actually a plural form but it is the proper form of the word god and in greek this is also translated as theos uh but wait just a minute here this is a christian translation of the bible and what do we have here allah wait a minute according to a lot of evangelicals isn't allah a false god so what's he doing in the Christian translations of the Bible? 
This is the same Bible that Arab Christians use. And mind you, if you dig a bit deeper, you're going to see that the root of this word that a lot of evangelicals say is a false god is actually exactly the same as Elohim. And it's no surprise that the revelation that told the Arabs to put away their idols and to actually follow the revelation given the same revelation that was given to Moses and to Jesus and all of that just in more clarity and more simplicity embodies this same term that is the root of the Hebrew Elohim. It's the same root. It's the same subject. So don't let institutions mislead you. Don't let any kind of organization tell you what God is and what's not God. Because God is source. God is one. God is the one creator and the one inspiration of all things. And let's not look to institutions to define that for us. And it's the same exact consonants. The problem is in the interpretation of the writings. You know what I'm saying? But it says that leave it up to me. Because we, this is Allah speaking first person, we are the best judge of judges. So why would you get your panties in a bunch by not allowing source to take care of justice? And that's exactly what the rallies have graduated into. Yelling in the streets is not exactly the same as, you know, beating down the politicians. But, you know, that served its purpose. And now we're taking it a step further, realizing that Source's justice is far more extensive and exhaustive than any of us could even imagine to meet out. So when we start to see that broader perspective, we realize that, yes, Allah is the most just of judges. He is the judge of judges. And under that, the judges will be judged for everything they've done to us as sovereign beings. You know, they've taken us onto their ship and uh, I wish I could share what I've learned about sovereignty and not contracting with law enforcement. What's going on? We don't want to contract with you. We know we know men's standards. We're not doing anything wrong. No, don't worry. There's, there's already I just want to talk to this gentleman. So we, we, For what? He's, he's with me. Okay. He's with me. Can, so I, can I just there. see your permit to use amplification okay. in a park? I, I, we I do not wish to contract with have, you. I don't, I don't have any. You don't have any? Can I, I see some ID then, please? No, don't show her ID. We don't yeah, wish to contract with you. Okay. But Go on your way. Okay. Amplification in a park. Can I see your ID? It's a bylaw. I have ID. You can do it if you have okay. a permit. Okay. Well, you no, 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 no. We, we've been doing the preaching with Street Church and this for years. Don't come and bother the young guns here. Okay? What's your name? Oh, am I supposed to give it? No, He's don't. My, yes, He's my He's, we're not going to contract okay. with you, miss. Okay. okay? So, Go on your way. We're having a peaceful day. And this is not peaceful right now, what you're doing. So just continue on your way. We are just sharing a message of goodness. And okay. good news in the gospel, and we're just... And again, I've asked to see his permit to use amplification in a park. Listen, there's many... been able to produce it. I understand, but there's many preachers here in this city, and we've been doing it for years, okay. and you guys have not even right, approached us for years. Me. No, it's hypocritical. It's just so stop it already. Way. Even if it's a rule, it doesn't make sense. You get it? Logically speaking, it's the daytime. It's not past 10 o'clock where we're bothering all the residents here. It's broad daylight. But it's, you're still using amplification in the park. So what? So, so you, just because it's your rule doesn't mean I have to follow it. So you get, Do you, you follow the Ten Commandments? You, you get to pick and choose the Ten Commandments? Do you? No. You don't? I'm not following that. So you get to pick and choose. That is ineligible. Why do you get to pick that is for you guys to make money. I, it's all about money. How come you get we try to follow the rules. It's just about money. How come on. You can't answer me. Because I choose not to obey that garbage. It's garbage. Okay, if it was super loud and we're having a rock concert here and there's 500 people, that's a different story. That's where technically you would need a permit and a venue. Right now, we're just enjoying our day. Yeah, take a picture of me. I got Jesus. Yeah, take a picture of me. Send it to whoever. 
I got you, Coleman. And I got you too. Like how about you just Crooks. Yeah, a crook. Nice name. Crooks. <laughs> Come on, can you just leave us alone? Have a nice day. Make Calgary better. You're you're not making Calgary a better place. No, you're not. You're refusing to identify yourself to us. Because we don't contract with you. You're supposed to be contracting mean, yeah, with your own city workers. What does that mean, you don't contract to Okay, well... Us? That's exactly what it means. No paperwork, no more verbiage. Have a nice day. We're not hurting anyone. You're not hurting anyone. Go on your way. We're doing our job. That's nice of you. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Have a great day, crooks. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 It's just party, party pooping. They did the same thing with Archer Pulowski. And look where he is. You know what? He's coming out stronger. You don't know where you're going. Fix the system. You don't have Jesus. You're fake. Look at Coleman. You're just a fake. Bye, Coleman. Ain't no peace in these officers. Peace is only found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Shame on Calgary. Because we need to come out of this system and use their trick against them, turning their tables against them. Can we do it? Absolutely. And we're doing it now. We're doing it now. There are those of us that know what we're doing and refuse to contract with these criminals who run the criminal justice system. It's a system of justice for those criminals. But when we turn the tables against them, we realize that our sovereignty goes well beyond anything that says, well, I get to make my decision and you get to make yours. <sighs> Literally, we are the same as how the monarchs have portrayed themselves over the ages. That kind of authority, that is our birthright. We were born sovereign. We don't become sovereign by, you know, filing a UCC-1 to reclaim our straw man or rescinding signatures. You know, we were already sovereign. We're just exercising that right. Well, it's not exactly a right. It's more like a birthright. It's who we are. It's who we are. It's our nature. You know, and our right that they give us rights, they give us rights, which they don't give us rights. We're born with them. They're God given, source given. It's how we're born. You know, they just say, oh, you have this right now. You don't have this right. And it's funny because now in Calgary, it's saying you don't even have the right to protest, you know, and you got to wonder, like, if you really want to know who rules over you, you got to ask yourself. Who am I not allowed to criticize? Because honestly, whew, I think that answer has been pretty clear. Because a lot of these people, you know, they know about sovereignty. They're immune to prosecution. And you've got to wonder why. you got to wonder why. Well, they know what they're doing. But now a lot of us know what we're doing. And like I said... Kingdom of Darkness has brought it on, but come at me, bro. When the darkness comes at the light, you know, it's a big struggle. It's a big struggle. You know, we just flick on a switch and darkness doesn't exist. But that darkness, it is a struggle for the darkness. But guess what? It's no match. No match. And that's why we're here. That's why we're here. And that's why we each have our own piece of this puzzle to fit in place. Guys, are you doing your part? This is not to criticize. This is not to shame. Guys, sometimes I look at myself and I'm like, I should be doing more. But I'm under stress. I'm under pressure. You know, I'm not getting certain social avenues or, you know, whatever it is. Technology lining up. For the longest time, I was so frustrated because, you know, even the piano was missing a key. And I'm like, there are things I need to do with the piano that need to be done. 
Well, I wasn't missing a key, but a key needed to be fixed. And that was one of the very important keys right in the middle of the piano, which you're always using. But then I was like, you know, calm down, Joel. Don't take this to heart too seriously. Because whenever an issue presents itself, there's a solution. And you got to be solution oriented rather than trying to address the problem and then coming up with the solution. You got to just step back and say, okay, so what's the solution here? How can I really solve whatever it is? There is a solution. That actually should be your first statement. There is a solution and you don't know it. It looks impossible. It looks like, you know, you're getting beat down or trampled by horses like what happened in Ottawa with the convoy. You know, you got to realize like they know they're scared and that's why the enemy is coming at it with everything they can because, you know, now it's come spread to literally every nation in the world. But, you know, the major nations have really taken this to the next level. And it was funny because one of the first nations to pick up on the convoy was Israel. And you can say whatever you want about Israel, but, you know, as goes Israel so goes the world as goes america so goes the world and that's why it's all meant to suppress the uprising but they can't squash the truth you can't put a blanket over the fire you can't extinguish a light with darkness how many brain cells do they think they have left do they even think they have anything left i don't know they are the ones with hooks in their jaw because we are the ones advancing and everything, 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 even guys, I'm going to say this here. The first lockdown, the very first declaration of this pandemic, everything that has been going down has been major, major damage control. Don't ask me how it got started, but something fuddled their plans. I don't even care to know what it was because now I'm living in the present moment. And how am I going to incorporate who I am right now to build a future worth living in? That's what I'm looking at. The past is a great story, you know, and it's even greater than they tell us. Huh, but it's come back. And a lot of the research that I've been doing is into these technologies that have been hidden from us. I have a stack of papers, like I said in previous episodes, this thick. And it's literally the greatest project uh, that I've ever worked on. And I think like my whole life has been planning for this. But even this is going to be planned for something greater. That is the trajectory of life. That is who we are. Divine manifestors. Divine manifestors. Are you being who you're here to be as a divine manifestor? You're here. You know, you're being. But are you manifesting? Are you manifesting? Guys, manifesting is where it's at. And I'm going to be hosting workshops on these manifestations starting next month. If you want to get the details on that, hit up the Discord. Hit up the Discord because that's where the chat is. And when we chat on Discord, literally things open up like never before. Literally things open up like never before. And we start to realize that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Because we're not ruled by physical reality. We are ruling as sovereigns physical reality. And that is where it really begins. That is where life begins. That is not the ending point. That is when we actually realize, oh, huh, this is how it's done. Interesting. 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 So be yourself, do the inner work, you know, learn these techniques, you know, if you, even without the workshops, guys, there's plenty of information that you can find online. 
you know, research Neville Goddard, see what he has to say about it. How do you attain that state of being that is the wish fulfilled? You live in that end, in the present moment. And people are like, oh, I don't want to imagine the end because that's just going to make the present moment more unbearable. And you know what? I'm like, guys, have you really, really tried to get in that state of being where the end is fulfilled? It's one thing to say, ah, oh, I wish I had a big house. I wish I had a big business. I wish I had a fleet of cars and airplanes and yachts, <laughs> you know, house parties and oh, social circles and events and all of this stuff, stuff without living in the end is just going to demotivate you. But when I was at Ikea, guys, personal experience here. I'm not just saying this because someone else said it or it sounds good to say. This is personal experience. Check this out. When I was at Ikea, driving to work every day, it was like, why am I doing this? You know, I actually had a truth channel back in 2017. And I did research, like controversial research, by the way, but I did my own experiments and I convinced myself of the reality and whether other people were convinced or not, you know, those videos just kept coming through because I knew what I was doing. All of that was stifled because I ended up manifesting through physicality, trying to push that noodle of physical reality, which honestly doesn't get the noodle very far across the plate if you've ever tried it. But because I got back into that physical mind space, I ended up manifesting a physical barrier which was, you know, my time being compromised by sacrificing it at Ikea. So every day when I was driving to work, before I started my shift, actually, after I got to the parking lot, I would have affirmations and I started a lot of these videos actually just talking to you guys on my way to work. But the thing is, when I got to the parking lot, I would take out my manifestation beads which was just something I made like with the 12, well, actually 13 stones of the foundations of the year. And I put those stones into a little bracelet, you know, kind of like this. It's a bit short with only 12 to fit on my wrist, you know, as chicken bone as my wrist is. But the fact is that I just sat in my car for 15 minutes, approximately 15 minutes, every day before my shift. And I would just sit there and imagine and play an imaginal scene of the wish fulfilled. And it's a short scene, you know, the longer it is, the harder it is to actually get in that space and maintain it because you're constantly trying to remember the script and play it back. But you just have like you from first person point of view through your own eyes looking at someone else in the space where you wanna be, you know? So you have the visual and then you can have audio and all of these sensory inputs that you can use your imagination to create and convince your brain of that it's real. You know, you do it once and you play that scene over. You might have your friend congratulating you on, hey, I'm so glad, you know, you're not working at that place. Now you're free to do this kind of stuff. And you're like, hey, yeah, check this out on my computer, what I'm working on. And you're sitting on the beach or something, you know. All of these sensory inputs and that's it. They look at it and they say, wow, that's an amazing project you're working on. And you can have them fill in those words and define it that way so that it's, you know, more specific. And, you know, the first time you do it, you know, you're just kind of getting into it. Uh, but even that is profoundly powerful. But by the fifth and sixth time, like you're really starting to embody those emotions. You're really starting to embody the thought patterns you might have if that was real. What would be the next thing you would say? What would you want to do? What kind of food are you going to eat that evening? Or, you know, for me, it's always food because I'm cooking a lot. But the fact of the matter is you just play the short scene that embodies the wish fulfilled. And, you know, I've did that like 12, 13 times before my shift. And the shifts that I did that on where I really tapped into that space were absolutely amazing. 
even though the job itself wasn't worth, you know, shaking your head at. But that itself changed my reality. And now that that phase of manifestation has been phased out, I realize that I'm actually living the preliminary effects of those manifestations. And I didn't strive for any of it. It fell into place, you know, after all of these things unfolded, all of a sudden I find myself in this space where I'm living out the beginnings of those realities. It's great enough to do that while you're sitting and awake or, you know, sometimes you'll just be sitting in a chair and you'll have time and you'll just like close your eyes and visualize it sometimes it's even better when your eyes aren't completely closed and i don't know why that is i really don't know why that is but you can really tap into those emotions when you kind of you phase out this space actually but your eyes aren't entirely closed so there's something there but really the best time to do these visualizing effects it's actually imagination but visualizing is a broader term because primarily we're vision based creatures and that itself stimulates this kind of embodiment of that first person point of view the best time to really do these kind of exercises is right before you're going to bed or as you're in bed falling asleep but you got to make sure that you get a few of these loops in of the imaginal scene before you fall asleep, you don't want to fall asleep before you actually embody that state of being. But once you embody that state of being, like I said, the circumstances don't matter. Only the state of being matters. And you can start this out by doing some really basic visualizing, you know. You don't have to take it too far. Something that you can actually convince yourself of that is real while it's happening. And a good way to start to get yourself into that first person point of view and embody the imaginal space is to tie your shoe. You know, it's intricate action from first person and you're concentrating on how to tie your shoe. You know, you can do this kind of simple effect. And, you know, me, I pre-tie my shoes. I use a shoehorn and slip it on. But I've done it before where I visualize tying my shoe and lo and behold, all of a sudden, there I am tying my shoe. Which, yeah, really doesn't happen. Let's just say that. So that's one thing to do. A a Neville Goddard would do one where he's climbing a ladder. And, you know, that is a very simple one. You just visualize yourself as you're falling asleep. You don't even have to loop it, you know. You know, just keep climbing Jacob's ladder as you're falling asleep. Don't bother counting sheep because, well, (laughs) unfortunately, there's plenty of those around. But, you know you'll realize that a lot of things we've had control over and it's simple control. That's what makes this so important for me to share with you guys. It's simple. It literally is the most natural thing a child does. Imagine. You know? Why? Are they so threatened with imagination? And they bring in, you know, cartoons and such, Disney, to say, oh, the imagination is the key. But when you see the cartoon, you think that, oh, the cartoon is stimulating my imagination, giving me ideas to kind of, you know, baby and just feed in my head. But really... Source is the greatest inspiration for imagination there is. And when we tap into that, we realize destiny. Destiny is the script through which we should write our imaginal scenes. But what is our destiny? Well, our destiny is what we're here to do. And that is our passion. You want to fulfill your destiny. You want to do it, but if you have a screwed up idea of what your destiny is, you're not going to manifest a good destiny and you're actually going to run from that, your true destiny. You're going to run from the destiny you're trying to avoid 
but you're going to end up running from the destiny that is yours to begin with. That's how the enemy works, guys. That is the enemy, and the enemy is ego embodied. It's the dualistic mindset of physicality versus source. And ultimately to remove source from the picture and just trap you in a physical paradigm. We got to really break out of those paradigms that we've been controlled with. And right now we might not know the solution, right? But there is a solution. There is a solution. And that imaginal scene will become real. And you might start just by seeing yourself, you know, just going out for a walk or something. And as you start honing that awareness, you're going to start realizing that mindset of what you would do if you were free. Right? If you're locked in your house, a walk might be nice. Good place to start. But that's not sources best for us a walk is good but source is best is not just victory but the after effects of victory looting the plunder going back to the enemy's camp and taking back what he stole from us well i went to the enemy's camp and i took back what he stole from me That song we used to sing growing up in the congregation that we were active in as a family, which a lot of churchianity was absolutely against, you know, this is why I distinguish between mainstream churchianity and the true ecclesia and the true ecclesia is rising up now and it's not what people expected, but these are the people that are winning this battle. And we are the people that are fighting for the whole world. So, no pressure, you know. The Logos is available to everybody. Just get that to work in you and through you and around you. And we will see this utopia manifest. It has manifested, guys. It has manifested. It's already here. It's already here. We are in it, but the world around us is still in this time lag that is conforming to it. So by faith and that unconditionality, agape, we can hold that anchor, elpis, hope, and keep ourselves on the right trajectory. And we might sway here and there with physical circumstances you know that's natural but that anchor always keeps us fast and course corrects to that straight path that leads to ananda so with that being said guys i really love you guys i really do i'm sorry for being away for so long but you know life is such that it just keeps going on New things come, old things go. There's only one that remains the same. And when we have our hope in him. The kingdom of darkness, bring it. Bring it. Bring it. We're more than overcomers. So, to everybody watching, receive the blessings, receive the abundance, Receive the prosperity. Receive the wholeness. Shalom. Nothing missing. Nothing lacking. Nothing broken. Nothing out of place. Absolute wholeness in your spirit, soul, and body. Where? And harmony with reality. With what 
is. And that is your awareness interacting with what is. Shanti. When all things are perfect, the sum of reality is zero. Because there's neither here nor there in Yahida or divine unity with source. So we manifest that state of being for the whole earth. Check out the Discord chat because I'll be posting the schedules for the workshops on there. We're going to collaborate and really create something even greater than we've started to see in the last year or two. Since 2012. <laughs> since whenever we've really woken up and started questioning things. Good things are coming. Good things. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to sign out here. It's been an awesome ride. Expect it to get even better. So I'm going to get to having my avocado bowl. Not that kind of avocado bowl. I'm talking about a real avocado bowl. And I'll check you guys in a future episode. Joel. Signing out once again. Agape. Salam. Namaste. Hotep. Oh,